This is a Spotify embed tag. It is a web component. It's open source. If you are a front end developer, and obviously, Laura, you're a front end developer, you can just go and download this and then you can put it into a build routine. And outside of the build routine, you're going to get highly compiled code that is completely unreadable. But you know how to do all those things, right? No, but I know your email address. That's right. So imagine I get hit by a bus and I want you to be able to put Spotify on the internet. This does no one any good. Now, there's millions of bricks in the standard that's underlying this, but if it's sufficiently complex, we can't empower anyone. The last conversation around minimal computing, there's an interesting platform called Wax, and then it's kind of brushed over. Well, once you have all the technical skills, then you can totally just use Wax and it's easy. That's the segment I'm trying to solve. We can't just keep punting and saying, well, if you understand databases, then you understand what WordPress, well, if you understand, I saw that with the Drupal community for a decade. They have hellish usability, and they just hide behind, well, I mean, it's a really hard system. I joined that community to empower other people, not to build huge multinational corporations. And that's largely what that space is. It might be used by 8% of the market, but it's enormous. It's got billion-dollar valuated companies in the space. Their focus isn't on empowering the people in this room. It's on keeping the market hold they have. So where does this come Back to play with our Spotify embed. And this is the only look at code, hopefully. A Spotify embed tag is fundamentally a class coming from a single JavaScript file. So unlike other component architecture, like React, Angular, Vue, if you've heard those words, you need a whole ecosystem in order to leverage those technologies. They are com compilation on top of the JavaScript standard. This is baked into the browser and extends from HTML elements. So effectively, all the tags that you use in the page, has anyone ever questioned if a paragraph tag is going to break in their site? Uh, a strong tag. OK, how about blink? Blink, we definitely would argue about. <laughs> but you don't question those things. That's the ground that we all walk in. You don't think about it, right? What if it, until, of course, there's an earthquake, as it was you know, like five years ago in this area. But we don't think about these things because they're so low level. So what a web component is, is developer's ability to make new HTML that rides on top of the HTML standard. So if you think of the video tag, the video tag took like five years and then several years after that to have an uptick in adoption and suddenly we don't have Adobe Flash Player anymore. And you might see that as the natural evolution of things. This is where I'm coming from. All of this cruft that is WordPress, Drupal, all of this stuff that has this huge layer that we just go, you just learn a whole ton of technology and then you can leverage those tools. That's the type of revolution I'm trying to take out so that we're just empowered and can build cool and interesting things. So I define properties of a Spotify tag. A Spotify tag is then made up of styles. These styles only work in the Spotify tag. And then HTML. But now when I put Spotify tag on a website, it interprets and runs this HTML and wires my properties into it so I can have an easy to use API. It's everyone following. If not, you're going to be really bored for five minutes or whatever. All right, then I made an editor. And the editor is called Hacks, H hyphen A hyphen X, which follows the web component standard. Hacks doesn't have any built in functionality other than knowing how to edit HTML. However, if an HTML tag, web component, has this schema associated with it, then Hacks reads the schema and builds an authoring experience out of other web components. And then when you modify things, you're just updating the properties in the code. So that when I save, I'm always saving highly semantic, very simplified HTML, but it is still fundamentally HTML, which means it works anywhere. So it's hard to envision works anywhere, but if you get that in your front end developer, then sweet, you can use it. Or you can go to our docs and you can see, I can plug in the evil Morty thing here, I can tweak the theme using this API, and I could empower someone that's slightly more technical to basically tweak these little variables. And if I copy this HTML, and I throw it into, in this case, a Campus Press instance, as long as it has the definition of that Spotify tag. So I wanna make sure we're clear. There isn't just, there's not magic, although we do call it the magic script. There isn't magic that suddenly every website out there knows what the Spotify tag is, okay? There's a script similar to how you would get jQuery from a CDN old school or use somebody's cool audio library, things like that. If you reference the script, it points to the Penn State CDN and you get access to the 
I don't know, six, I think it's 935 plus tags that I've made. Because I largely haven't talked about the things I've done. If you follow me online and you think I've talked about the things I've done, I give very little snippets because we have a very small team and I don't have a dedicated multimedia team. But those constraints have brought about incredible things. So this is a video hyphen player tag working in a WordPress site. It was not engineered for a WordPress site. It was engineered to make the web better. That brings up and has this a higher playing field, raises all ships. And oh, WordPress is one of those ships, so this stuff works there. In fact, yesterday, I tried to throw out the idea of progressive enhancement or progressive decoupling. If you're working in WordPress and Drupal, so was I, like three years ago. And I gave some super crazy rant to Laura and a company at Domains 2019. And I still only had like one little tag on those systems. But because this approach is just HTML, you keep stacking. You can build anything this way. So I can build a video player or I can build a modal. And this modal happens to be used by the National Archives Truman Library. So they have a NARA menu bar links, which is a custom element that they made. It only works on their site. But they ran the command to get our simple modal. A highly accessible click and drop in, copy and paste this code. You have a modal. You don't think about the accessibility considerations. And if there is an accessibility issue, it has that singular file to go back. So we have the accountability to be able to resolve easily in a cross-platform way. So you don't work at the archives, awesome. Where our experiments started is with an icon. Does everyone use icons on their website? So um, my SVG icons don't play with your gobbledygook. CSS-based icons don't play with my font awesome icons, don't play with my Twitter bootstrap icon. So we made an icon library. Is the first component we made. And so there's simple icon. And it's amazing the world that unlocks when you have a thing that can be nested in anything and build up from there. So I've got a simple icon. Then I can make a button. And the button wraps the icon. Now I have a whole icon definition. I have the button. If I need to make a menu, then I have a menu that has this icon button in it that has the icon. And I just keep focusing on that one little piece, but leveraging my whole Lego set. Imagine Lego sets where once you built the thing, it didn't immediately get broken by your kids. And then you're like, I just paid $40 for this, and you broke it. It just stayed that way. And then I could click a button and have another copy of it. And they're by reference. So once I fix the original Lego set, all of my other Lego fleet in Benny's army in Lego Movie 2, they're all attacking simultaneously and getting the same functionality. That is the type of exponential growth and scale I've been able to hit with this approach. So it doesn't have to be icons. Let's say you want to be sarcastic, because I'm very sarcastic. And you're going to type the characters, and you're going to do the up and down text. Something as silly as that. I could make a tag called more sarcasm, throw the text in there, interpret that, put that on a web page, and now we get trolley text. Or memes. I'm going to go get a meme. I'm going to go to a meme generation service. I'm going to type in the stuff. I'm going to find my image. Or we make a web component called Meme Maker. It takes in a property that is image URL. It takes in top text and bottom text. And I can update a single HTML attribute, and it'll update the underlying source. I can copy that and let's say throw that into the original code pen that you didn't know that I was showing you. And this code pen has the literal, oh, it says four lines, four line copy and paste that you can put in any system. And now there is my perfectly portable meme image. Uh, I also, what did I have in there before? Spotify embed, right? So I could throw my Spotify embed in there in the exact configuration I had it previously. Yeah, sure, leave that. All right. So we don't need to show Spotify embed. We've got memes. If we have memes and we have GIFs, did you know that when someone posted a GIF into um, Discord just a few minutes ago and it's of Jim Groom like dancing on the cover of Time Magazine for some reason, um, that is an accessibility error. It is an auto-playing piece of media. GIFs are fundamentally inaccessible unless you account for them with libraries. And then if it's a jQuery-based library, well, it has to play well with my WordPress site that has this jQuery-based library. It's a nightmare to solve that because it wasn't accounted for initially. We have an alley GIF player. This has taken a screenshot using a microservice of what the GIF is, which is a fantastic GIF. I can't believe you're still down here making GIFs, dude, right, if you get this reference. So it won't play until I actually engage with it to play. We can solve fundamental low-level accessibility issues with this approach. Or does anyone recognize this conference badge? This is a very, very small piece of technology. I was able to teach my students in a semester to do this. So this is their work. 
We took as inspiration something made of the gobbledygook of the web and of SVGs, and that's, I'm not saying that stuff's bad. We need to get there to get to this future that we want to be at where stuff just works and, and things are portable like water. So event badge, they made that. They wire things into certain attributes. There's HTML underneath, and then those properties get wired in, and we get the interpreted result. It's by reference. If it's inaccessible, I can go and leverage and rebuild this over and over again. Speaking of inaccessible, you know about color contrast, right? So you're going to go to the training that's given by the team to teach all your faculty to use the styling that they want so that they can bold that text, but make sure that it's hitting WCAG 2.0 AA whenever the color contrast changes and it plays nicely with dark mode in your LMS, right? And I'm speaking really fast because there's a lot of coffee, but there's also not much time. That just did all of that uh, for me. I didn't think about it. If you watch the text when I go into dark mode with this, it's flipping to a 2.0 AA contrast ratio, regardless of what I'll put in. So if I set the color of the text as orange, this is guaranteed to solve this problem, no matter which one of these I put in. That is a low level baked into the element consideration that we've gotten, I think, 93 of our elements. So if you want to tweak the color, you do, but immediately don't have to sit there and go, oh, is that inaccessible now? Maybe you want to get into pedagogy. So you want to learn about sharks. My kid loves sharks. Oh, the great white shark is 15 feet long. You want this go player. If it's um, things that I don't talk about publicly, like a headless gradebook system uh, that's individualized, leverages all the same tags that you saw before, and if I hit this time exponentially, that we can focus on all sorts of things because I didn't have to think about how we were going to do icons in the system. I didn't have to think about where this is going to get deployed. At the end of the day, this is a gradebook light tag, and if you dumped it in, in the same way that I did in the editor before, I'm not going to put in code pen, it'll like, look hellish, it would just hydrate and you'd get the entire interaction pattern. So with that, we can keep building up. This is a content management system called Hacks. Actually, it's, it's working with Hacks Levity, or sorry, with Eleventy in a project called Hacks Levity. Everything you're seeing here, this is roughly 10,000 custom elements on the page. This thing will load like lightning no matter where it is because we are at a spec that is so close to raw browser code that this stuff runs extremely quickly and is very small overall. This is using the university libraries. So this is for putting, um, I forget the name of this format, uh, DBPF uh, files online. So this is a play from uh, like the 1300s that was translated into an XML file. And then you just give graduate students the XML file and obviously they can read the XML or we make a web component that can play the XML and outputs it in a sustainable way so that we can have a conversation around this play interactively. Yes, and web components, so I have a homepage banner, so if I wanted a homepage banner on any other website anywhere on the internet, I can use that four, four line script and now I get this homepage banner with a certain API. They have used our system extensively to build really big online courses using Hack CMS. So this is a Biology 110 course uh, it's got learning objectives because you all go to the training to lay out the learning objectives card to communicate the objectives effectively in the same visualized color and the icon that I wish that I did. Or this powers my blog, which looks like garbage now because I haven't focused on it because this is a course management platform, sort of, but it's mostly just writing HTML. Or it's our documentation engine. Or it's a different documentation engine with a copy of VS Code running in it. You have VS Code on your browser, right? And you can just say, make me a VS Code instance and copy and paste the code and it's there. And images, that's just another link. Oh, MathJax, because I have to say that we support MathJax. So yes, we support things like MathJax. But we get all the way up to, this is my course running in it. And my course has students learn the underlying tech stack that I just ran through in 30 seconds to actually engineer more parts of the system. And you're seeing the version on Reclaim Cloud, Penn State's uh, platform as a service instance, which means anyone can just log in and they get an account and they get their own copy of this tech. Uh, we'll roll out this version shortly. We have our RPG character. The RPG character is you. And I told my students, I want this to feel like a video game. It needs to be fun because web development sucks and building websites sucks. So it needs to feel fun and interactive and engaging and yes, it has silly sound effects. So we're going to build a course and we are going to 
create our own, although actually I won't be able to show it in this amount of time, but we have the ability to import and take a docx file and convert it into a fully functional, highly accessible website. Our old platform, any other existing hack CMS site can be ingested and then remixed into another one. Uh, Evolution, which is an internal format, pros are literal like point to the URL and it will are web components. My hat is a web component. The pro progress bar is a web component. The explosion, the sound effect management is a web component. The toast is a web component. What you're seeing now is a lesson, and this is actually now into building a site using Hack CMS. So by default, we are a multi-site management tool. If you go, that was a lot of work to add a page by adding that one page there and hitting edit, and then searching YouTube in context, and we search YouTube for Hacks the Web, so that you understand a little bit about Hacks the Web, the chaotic good from 2019. Oh, oh, there it is, good. YouTube was slow, not us. So all of that extremely difficult work that you just saw me do right there. If I search for my site again, back to our minimal computer work that you just saw me do right there. If I search for my site again, back to our minimal computing talk, and I need to download that, now I have it as a zip file. This is an entirely working, offline capable, I have everything that I just did, which was a ton of work, let me tell you, <laughs> in a format that I can throw on GitHub. Just copy and paste this folder output in there, and it's going to run. And ultimately, when I hit that add page button before, it is making a single HTML file that just has the body of there's a page break that's at the top of the page that has some metadata about what the hell is the title of this page. But when I put that's both an potentially correct, so we should be able to support multiple correct answers, obviously. Yeah, answers, not the question. Oh, you're right, you're right. Um, no question. <laughs> okay, what is the question, all right? And it's definitely not things. But so I could insert an item below here, and now I'm about to paste a reference to the link which then we auto detect, but I'm gonna hit that. So I'm gonna paste in. And what just happened there was on the paste, it detected that it's a single line entry. It is a link to a JPEG or GIF or video. In this case, it was a GIF. It just sent it off to an image conversion service to snag a screenshot of the GIF because I don't want you to violate accessibility with that copy and paste. So this is that Jim Groom image in the GIF player. Let's put him in a column layout instead. So he's over there and I can save this and we can see Jim Groom dancing when I click, but otherwise he's not. And we can see, uh, is he full of himself and he's a good dancer? Absolutely, and we did a great job, again, re-leveraging just those other animations and processes from before. Everything that I'm building, again, all the time, this is HTML. I can copy all of this, throw it into that code pen. As long as I have the references to those tags, I get an identical output and experience. I do not want to be the next thing you're tied to. This is why I've got my jokerisms. I'm only burning my half of the money. The whole point of this is not to just build some other advomatic piece of garbage that 20 years from now version of you is complaining about. I want to solve these problems forever no matter where they would occur, because we have the standards to do this now. Sorry. So there are other aspects to the system, um, like let's say search NASA in context, and that just threw an image in. I can always tweak whatever the settings are, just the component, so I get things back to this one place. I've got the form because we've got schema, and so if we have an issue with these forms from a usability perspective, we're doing this gap analysis now. I update the schema. We push out the code. No one has changed any of their media or things in production, but the definitions have changed so that now when the new version's out there and I hit edit, oh, this is what we can do with this now. Yes, you have to be careful and not fundamentally change an API, but we go through a lot of work to make sure like, well, what is the scope of this thing? Uh, part of this is coming from, we've done a lot of ontological work to say this is how we envision pedagogy in system building. And so, um, if you're familiar with Elms, this is actually going to end up looking like an Elms logo <laughs> in the end um, of how we relate these concepts. But we're doing a gap analysis currently where, we, well, do we have an effective way of doing a demonstration of technique? Do we have any tags that could be used for coaching? And then you'll actually have those things tagged in your drawer of available components, right? Because I want to get out, I could search for, I can put a table in. And then if you're still back down and editing table code with TRs and TDs, I've failed. And so we have a table editing web component. But the output of the table editing web component is a table. It's not a whole bunch of uh, Elementor gobbledygook that will require you to use Elementor forever. Or makes editing a table a lot more like, 
uh, not Word, what is it, it's a Microsoft, <laughs> I can't spell, product, right? If I wanna do row striping, styling, condensing these rows, neat. I cannot tell you how fun this next part is. So there's a big Merlin button. Has anyone used uh, Alfred app or Spotlight or anything like that? So we basically took inspiration from that, combined it with a, a prototype that I don't actually, search YouTube. Right, we want to make publishing like water, extremely accessible. The Merlin widget, it's a web component. The pop-up, it was the same pop-up that was available on the Truman Library website. This is a transformative standard if we think semantically and work in this way. We have an incredible amount of creative ability at this event, and then we all get into skipping that little part at the front that's like, hey, there's a ton of setup in order to use this. And we go, well, but once you get over the ton of setup, then we can have a conversation. I want to eliminate and attack that setup part. All of our systems are made out of HTML. We don't sit here and argue over, well, Laura's paragraph in her site isn't gonna work in my paragraph. And we can get to that same point if we have the same Lego bin beyond that to play with. So we've got some, some other features of Merlin, obviously, uh, <laughs> files. Um, we have an insights dashboard, not positive that part will work. Oh uh, yeah, good, it did. So it analyzed that what I've written so far is uh, fourth grade level. Um, you've got IPSs, or we do, or instructional designers and faculty that have to then go and test the links in every single course. We can write stuff that does that automatically and provides the feedback report and then identifies exactly where those links are broken for sustainability. We can search the content, mostly uh, content and media, primarily based on the ways that Laura, Laura expressed in, in some issues like years ago. Um, we can administer the outline of the entire site. So if we wanna add a whole ton of pages, I can add a whole ton of pages. And every day, um, I really had a great time at Jim's event and the documentary they're filming is just brilliant, absolutely brilliant. So if I wanted to kind of sit back and anatomize. So that's a web component that my students made in class. It took three weeks. I'm just getting good at teaching. <laughs> so what I'm showing you, this is not like, here's the product and we're done. Like if I wanted to switch this to be some other design because we have other themes hidden within here and I made other themes hidden within here and I made this one recently. Um, if I Terrible themes. So if I want this to look like the website I made in college um, that was my production company, you can make your site look like Acid Scorpio Production Company. 